All right. How's everybody doing? <laughs> okay. So, sorry about that. Uh, jumped in and out there. Um, glad to have you guys here. Today, we're going to be talking with Enrique Martinez about the Novation Circuit Tracks. We're really excited about it, and we've been playing on it quite a bit, and it sounds great. Um, we're going to have him on here. We're going to have uh, ask some questions. We're going to want the chat to ask some questions, too, and... He'll give us a good demo of how the machine works and some of the differences between the original tracks and the new tracks. Yeah, yeah. I'm Nick Bigelow, Matt Picora, And uh, like Matt said, I'll be over here moderating the chat, making sure, um, think of this more as like a QA, and a you know, definitely some live demos. But if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. I'll make sure Enrique uh, can hear them and, you know, we'll kind of just do it live. And, uh, you know, thanks for everybody who has pre-ordered the circuit tracks um that actually should be coming into the shop on friday start shipping out then uh, as well as we'll have some just to start selling and yeah i think that's pretty exciting you know as always i hope everybody's doing well um i'm glad that we could do some live streams we have some nice live streams coming down the line after this one too but today without further ado we'll actually uh get enrique on here and uh we'll start demoing the tracks all right let's do it Enrique, Yo, Enrique, how's it going? Yo, what's up? Good to have, uh, good to be back on. Yeah, yeah, good to have you. You're you're feeding me lines. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. As a, how's it been? If people uh, remember, our very first live stream was with Enrique. Uh, we were demoing the launch key line and some peak stuff, which has been pretty cool. Like I've been loving uh, some of the launch key stuff. I got it set up at the shop right now where. Got the keys running on a digitone, and the pads actually trigger a dig attack, and uh, that was pretty dope. I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's some easy functionality to make it pretty flexible. Totally. So, how are you doing? Good, man. It's a, a crazy windy day. I'm not sure if you can see some tree movement back there. That's actually the wind completely stopped right when I said <laughs> that. Um, yeah, but it's been pretty windy, a little rainy, but it's nice, you know, to get some more greenery going because la can get pretty dry but other than that i can't complain it's been awesome it nice. looks fantastic we yeah. actually have a little bit of sunshine today yeah it's a little bit of sunshine here we're in a dark room though so can't quite <laughs> see it but i'm excited spring's just around the corner you know yeah well we're yeah. super thank stoked. you everybody for tuning in as well i uh, super appreciate it yeah yeah i mean uh you know unless uh there's anything pressing let's let's start going into it you know we'll uh I know you, we got a tracks here sitting on our table, but you're kind of the master of the tracks. And uh, I think we could start just kind of going over some differences between uh, the old uh, circuit and the circuit tracks and kind of uh, see what we got going there, you know? Cool. Yeah, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. So um, I would definitely say that is kind of like the biggest question there is, right? Like, what's the difference between the original and, and tracks? The things that stick out to me the most, probably one of the biggest things is kind of how the drums are laid out. Because on the original circuit, you always had the drum one and two page, as well as the drum three and four page. And they were always connected, but now they are completely independent. And again, before, when you would press play, you would kind of see both sequencers running at once. Now you only see one and actually all of your samples are displayed across the bottom two rows. So for example, here, I have a bunch of different kick drums. Ooh, sounds good. Right, can you hear that all right? Yeah. Sounds, oh yeah. yeah. Sounds punchy. Yeah, so what's great with this setup is with sample flip, which was an update in the original circuit, I can just select a sample and place it wherever I want. But at the same time, let's say I like this one. I can go and place this down as well. Okay, nice. Very and cool. I've just added two drum samples to one track. And before you would have to like record arm it, jump to the samples page by hitting shift drum one. And like, you know, it would work, but it wasn't as streamlined as this. And this just gives you quick access to all uh, the banks. You've got four banks of 64 samples still. So, you know, same thing. You just go and put that in. And then, you know, you like that. Again, I'm going to just go ahead and hard write that to those steps. 
And if I find another sample, I can just overwrite those steps. Oh, that's cool. And then you have control. Nice. Yeah, what are the... Um, say, yeah, it's... What are like the different effects that you can do with the, the samples? So with the effects, you have the... Um, the typical stuff of like pitch, decay, overdrive, and then the, the kind of shelving EQ. So like if we wanted to, let's just focus on this little hi-hat for a little bit. Turn up more high end or kind of filter out some of the high end. And then on top of that, you of course have the typical effects that we've had, like the delays. Oh, whoops. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, okay. nice tape delay sound there. Yeah, and then the reverb. This is some pretty good effects. And then of course you, yeah, they're good. They're super usable. It's the delay with the 16 different types of that delay, ranging from ping pong, different sync types. And then you also have the different reverb types with different pre-delays, um, reverb sizes, and decay times. And then the hard kill if you just don't want any effects at all. And another thing too is you also have um, a built-in compressor that kind of glues everything together, which you can turn off by just turning off the effects as a whole, but it definitely does help in keeping everything like a little nicer and a little, you know, more glued together. I mean, it does what a compressor does basically. And those effects actually too, another good point is um, Circuit Tracks now has two audio inputs and the effects can be applied to those inputs as well. Those would be under the MIDI tracks here. So when you're under effects, you select this, you just turn up MIDI one or MIDI two and that's input one, input two. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. even then, taking it a step further, if I just hit effects one more time, mm -hmm. this will take us to the sidechain page where you can sidechain the synth tracks or the external input tracks as well. So if you have like a bass line or something going into the audio input, you can sidechain it to each independent um, drum track, depending on which one you want to use. Yeah, that's awesome. That was like, a, you know, we had a particular customer really uh, wanting to use the side chain because like yeah it's awesome to start ideas on the circuit and then you have like one other synthesizer you want to go in there but you know a lot of us use compressing as glue and so to even have this kind of bind that all together for uh it kind of starts acting kind of as a creative mi mixer you know that's exactly right and it's actually it's really fun too because you can get as straightforward as you want with it or really weird with it because it's two mono inputs, but you can run it as one stereo input. And all you have to do is in the mixer page, if you hit page down, these now turn into pans. Yeah, so basically what's cool here is you can say input one be hard left, input two be hard right. And then if you want it to be really strange, you can even say left input be side chain to drum three, and then right input be side chain to drum two, but by that amount. So you can really start like freaking things out. Even with the effects, you can send the left channel to a ping pong delay by a little bit and a lot mm -hmm. for the right channel. Nice. It's just like, um, you know, weird exploratory types of things. And if you're curious what the uh, side chain sounds like here, let's go ahead and find a preset. That one's cool. So. Side chain. Nice. Yeah, and if we were to go to drum one and just choose a more normal pattern, let's say we clear those out and then duplicate this set. Mm -hmm. And then here, another big change as well is dedicated uh, synth control. So if I wanted to turn down the filter, I know what knob to actually turn down. <laughs> Is that possible? 
So we took Nudge out to make space for pattern settings. Okay. And this is like a mega update when it comes to um, circuit track. So if you wanted to do a Nudge now, mm -hmm. what I would suggest is you just duplicate mm -hmm. steps 1 through 16 to 17 through 32. Yeah. And that's going to create this one bar pattern into a two bar pattern. All patterns can now be up to 32 steps. Nice. So now if I wanted to nudge this pattern in pattern settings, I would just hold down shift and this is going to select the new start point. So I can say start here oh, and when okay. I'm, when shift isn't selected, I'm selecting the end point and I'll say end here. So now, oh, cool. right. So every time I press play, it's going to start there. Huh. Okay. The same thing. I can say, uh, start here and there. That's actually a really clever way of thinking about it, honestly. Like, <laughs> you, yeah, it's cool yeah. because if, if I was to clear, hold down clear and hit steps 1 through 16, it just brings us back to the first bar here. Mm -hmm. In pattern settings, same thing. I can then say, you know what, let's end here. So mutate will take our existing pattern here and just mutate it into a new musical randomized result. It won't add notes. It'll just kind of shift notes around. So I'm going to go ahead and save that pattern. I'm going to duplicate that pattern from pattern one to two. Mm -hmm. We'll go to two and check this out. If I hold down shift and hit mutate, it kind of moves some notes around. We'll do it a couple times. So let's see what this sounds like. Hmm. Right. Let's add some more notes in here just to make it more. And then mutate that. Hmm. That's cool. You can really write some pretty um some pretty complex sounds on here. Yeah, you can and that's the thing, it's like super straightforward and once you kind of get used to the muscle memory around this thing, it's really, really fast because now we can go back to this pattern and then jump to this pattern. And then back. Or you can even do weirder things like scenes, which isn't on circuit, but it is on circuit tracks. So and what scenes will do is in the mixer page, you actually have 16 different scenes that you can write to. And this is basically going to take whatever patterns are active and write them to that moment. So I can hold down shift. Boom. Mm -hmm. Now we have that saved there. And I can say, cool, I'm going to write a scene where there's no kick. That pattern's playing. And let's go to this pattern on drum three and just write this wild whatever this might sound like. I don't even know. So then we can say, cool, that's there. We'll write that there. So in Mixer, we'll launch the first scene. And then we'll launch the second scene. Yeah, that worked out. These can even be chained. Yeah, I was gonna say, they chain together, yeah, right? It's like a, like a song, song mode, so to speak. Exactly, and you can kind of like build it out here and then just basically say, play from scene one to 16. Mm -hmm and it'll just slowly move its way across. And all this is also depending on what's going on within the patterns itself. So like drum one, let's say drum one is, or scene one, I should say, is drum one's patterns one through three tied together. And if you were to save that and launch that, that's gonna play the whole way through. And then if we were to launch this, you can see it kind of cues that up. So do, are you, um, you have 16 scenes? Yeah, you have 16 different scenes and each of those scenes hold which pattern chain data okay. is happening. Mm -hmm. And 32 and steps, And you can still, right? you still have one, exactly, 30, it gets, it gets so inception -y. You have 32 <laughs> steps per pattern and eight patterns per track. So I can even say tie drum pattern, drum one, pattern one to eight. So now we've tied all eight drum one patterns together and let that live in scene, like, well, four and nine now, or five and nine now. So if I hit that, it's gonna wait and launch that entire long scene. Of course, they're all the same empty pattern, but you get the idea. And then we're gonna go here. And then we're gonna launch the first one again. So, the scenes is, is super duper powerful and it gets really fun when you start using the toggle feature, which is hold something down, 
make some changes, like select a new scene, and then when I let go, it's gonna take me back to my last page, mm -hmm. which in this case is patterns. Nice. That's rad. Yeah, I didn't play around with the yeah. scenes too much and when yes, I was uh, played around with it. You know, just seeing somebody do it makes you think, damn, that wasn't actually too hard. And uh, really, yeah, you got exactly. different parts of the song written in like less than three minutes, you know? Right. And the other thing that's really awesome with Circuit Tracks that wasn't on the OG circuit as well is view lock mode. And a lot of times... Um, people will think of view lock as it's going to lock where the where the pattern is so like let's say we have um what pattern is playing right now cool this will work so say i make this to two bars right i want to hit duplicate it's like this so now my scene is odd or my um which steps i'm looking at one through 16 or 17 through 32 are constantly changing mm -hmm. But let's say I wanted to edit the second bar, I would hit shift, view lock, and now I can edit this. So I can add maybe. But it's not just for that. If I actually go to my patterns, they've all turned white and they're pulsing. So white is what I'm looking at, pulsing is what is playing. So if I were to hold down shift, I can select a new pattern and go and edit this pattern before it even plays. Oh. So I can say. That's really powerful. Right? So then, watch. <laughs> okay. Sick. Okay, there's the pattern division thing. I was going to ask about that. <laughs> Yeah, so that's kind of what I was messing around here. You have quarter, eighth, sixteenth, thirty seconds, and then quarter triplet, 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 triplet. Basically, in between of those. That's so cool. So sixteenth, eighth. Oh, I like that. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of like that. Being able to write a scene ahead of time is kind of what I enjoyed doing with electronic music or like with resampling, right? <clears throat> and then switching over to that resampled mm -hmm. version so that you can write something really quick to move back over to like that DJ style. Yeah. And it seems like the tracks kind of lets you do that. Yeah, it's def the, the view lock mode is like, I basically always have that on. Cause same thing, like say this is playing here and I can look at drum two pattern here and then like find a, a and put that there before it even plays. Right. And then. Nice. Sick. And same thing, I can duplicate this pattern back to the original one, look at the original one, and then just remove that little snare fill. Or make a fill, we'll go here, and I can duplicate this step a bunch of different ways. And then say, we've got patterns, and I'll launch these two. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's just, it's just again, once you kind of get used to the muscle memory of it, mm -hmm. it it's, it's really um, fast, and it's a really good improv tool. It does take a second, though, because you're kind of like, okay, white's what I'm looking at. Flashing is what's playing. I have to hold down shift to make sure I do that. But, like, even now while I'm doing it, I'm not even realizing right what i'm pressing so mm -hmm. please any questions put them in the comments below because i know i can go a little fast at times yeah <laughs> well, I, it just reminds me too like for me in the rack i like the metron and the metron has that same feature where i could see my gate sequences before i actually play them and when i'm improving live music like that's super important that i'm not always because in the same sort of sense i actually didn't know i had that and i would kind of get not frustrated, but it'd be like bouncing between the two. And I'm like, I just want to be on bar one so I could like maybe stop, uh, right. you know, right. just get it written a little bit easier. So that does the uh, Launchpad Mark III have a similar feature? It doesn't. And actually, that's a great question. I want to, I should ask the dev team if we can add a feature like that to the Launchpad. Because by default, the Launchpad is 32 steps, mm -hmm. right? We took that info and we put it here. Yeah into tracks um but there isn't necessarily a way to look at patterns ahead of time that that's exactly what i want watch them yeah because that's that's usually yeah. how i like to sequence anyways i'll just start making like variants of four patterns or one pattern times four and then just want to be on certain bars while i'm programming you know 
So those would be different patterns lit. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, enough. and that's the, that's the like the beauty of this as well. It's like it's all you know. It's pretty much always running at sixteenths or whatever you want. So mm-hmm. I can just like throw in random snares. Yeah. And be like, okay, I'm pretty sure that's gonna work to some extent. It's not like right. complete chaos, you know. Yeah. And same thing. Like if you were to go to the patterns and we go to listen to this this drum fill, I can just keep duplicating this. <laughs> right and it's just going to keep changing over and over again and again same thing like duplicate from there to there sweet we'll go back to drum two mm-hmm. duplicate it again and then i can duplicate from there to there mm-hmm. and then we'll go back duplicate and now i have this weird three bar forever changing right, going through three different patterns i just mutated to create three different fills and then i can then go and put those into different scenes and tie those scenes together and all of this without a screen too which is like i i personally kind of really like that yeah because it's like me and the machine i'm just here messing around with a bunch of different things yeah in terms of the scenes um are the patterns the only things that are associated with that or do like mutes also get associated with the scenes It's just, that's kind of why we left it here Uh in the mixer page. It's just going to be the patterns, Mm -hmm. so you can still play the mutes up here when you need to. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, because I thought about that as well, and I was like, oh, that would have been kind of nice, like building the song mode, but then it kind of lets you perform the song a bit while you're playing, Mm -hmm. and you can then add a little bit of your touch to things and kind of take things in and out once in a while. Nice. You know? Mm -hmm. Speaking of, like, a song mode... um, would this be something a device that could do like play stems yes and no mainly because you do have um the original circuit has 60 seconds of sample memory Mm -hmm. across the 64 pads as a whole so they share 60 seconds Uh, circuit tracks has a little over three minutes of sample time so three minutes and 16 seconds i think is where it's at right now so you could Put stems, but I mean, if your stem is three minutes and 16 <laughs> seconds, you have no other samples. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it wasn't necessarily designed for that. It was okay. more just like the one shots or chord stabs and things but like that. But three minutes is pretty enormous for a sample. Yeah, so it's basically more than three times the the original circuit. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That's a huge upgrade from the original circuit. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh, yeah, I don't know how they did it because a lot of it is, is still similar. We basically just took a lot of original circuits updates and just you know hardwired them to the face of the unit like the pattern settings the the presets the notes the mutes the scenes the pattern changes all that stuff Mm -hmm. and then all the uh synth effect stuff yeah but yeah i mean there's so many different ways like if we were to go to patterns here and let's you know i'm gonna just go select a whole new row of patterns the the pattern settings are really fun as well because let's do another simple pattern actually that might be a little too basic i mean it's never too basic right but okay i'll just go ahead and find a little so stereo oh my bad no 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 it just sounded really yeah. rich like that's the thing that kind of surprised me about the circuit tracks is just like it does a lot of good stereo play you know mm-hmm. yeah and i'm like with how much you can pitch samples down it sounds really good like i'm surprised at how well it sounds especially keeping like the fidelity of your samples yeah like super boomy and bassy like you drag and drop it on there wave or mp3 and you're still gonna get the same sound you put in back you oh you know? can drop mp3s in there yeah mp3s or or waves onto the sample slots and then uh, through components of course yeah and then um, with that, they're they're all ready to play, and you have them across your sample banks across the bottom. Oh wow, that's really cool! <laughs> like, let's take this sound, right? Oh yeah, and I do like how it drives too, man. <laughs> yeah, the overdrive is really good. Like on, like, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then taking it a step further, hopefully I don't blow anybody's <laughs> eardrums. This is my favorite, is to overdrive it and then filter it down. It just adds a ton of bottom into it. Sick. Right? Versus where it was at, which is... Yeah. (laughs) Wow, that sounded really good. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm so my favorite thing is with the pattern settings, let's say we do a simple pattern like this one here. Pattern settings, we can then set this to like 10 steps. Right, and then we can go find another weird sound. Sure, we'll do six steps. <laughs> Maybe synth sound. just the high pass low pass one thing that is really fun to do though is like say we have this track going here and then i can just say uh mixer will unmute everything i can just go ahead and save this and you can quick save to anything too so say you're here you just double tap save nice. i can then go to our effects and start start to do like a little swirl back into wherever they are. Oh, that's so cool. So this is actually a, a question we have in the chat. And I uh, yeah. I think it's a great question because you were in that projects page and it looks like you had it mm -hmm. laid out in like a particular way also. Maybe that's just like your thing to have it kind of stair-step down. <laughs> um, but, but the question is uh, just curious to hear more about how you like to arrange different projects and tracks and moving between them during performance. One thing that I noticed is pretty apparent it's really easy to jump to different projects without any interruption. Yeah. Right. So the projects will always change at the end of the bar. Mm -hmm. Or if you hold down shift, Whoa. <laughs> That's cool. okay. it'll go in time. It'll still keep the same tempo. Like say you jump on the fourth bar, it'll jump to the fourth bar or uh, the fourth step. It'll jump to basically the fourth step of this pattern. Mm -hmm or this project if you hold down shift, but otherwise it'll always wait until the end of the bar. So like say we're to save this again here, um, I can also change what color I want to save things by using this knob. Mm -hmm. So let's say we want to save it as red. So we have basically the blue version, the red version, red version, let's say it's a sure, this sound, the kick is maybe here, there, there, and not here and here. Um, save that. So it's going to wait till the end of the bar. Right. So that's the other benefit of having it um, change that way is because when you start doing all the effects and stuff, it kind of creates a swell and then just brings it back down onto the one, which is great. Mm -hmm. And the way I like to arrange things in here, well, at least on the OG circuit, since I didn't have scenes, I was using projects as my scenes. Mm. So I would say, cool, I like this pattern here, right? So I would say, cool, let's also save a copy there. I just, of course, overwrote that. And here I want uh, none of this plane, right? And I'll save that. And then I would go back to our patterns, our mixer, and I'll say, bring this in. I'll save that there. So this was kind of like the way I used to do it. Okay. But now I can just do that within the project right. using the scenes. Because kind of like what you were saying, Nick, where do the mute states get saved to the scenes? They don't. But what I can do is let's say we save this scene here. And I want a scene here that doesn't have the kick playing. I can just go to a pattern where there is no kick. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. And you got eight patterns. And then I can just save that out. there. So we can... 
Exactly. And then I can just say... Right? So that's kind of like my workaround, if you will, to the different mute states. But what's great there is I can still have access to quickly muting whatever I do want. Yeah, so as terms in terms of all this, you can color code things. Mm -hmm. And again, like on the OG circuit, I would do like, I think it was, I can't even remember now. It was like orange was C major, yellow was C minor. Um, and then I kind of color coded things to like the rest of my mm -hmm. studio <laughs> in this weird only I will ever halfway understand once in a while uh -huh. um, way, as most of us do. Um, but yeah, it's just nice to be able to have like one dedicated project with scenes and the different patterns and the patterns were 32 steps instead of 16, all within one spot. And then you can even load packs. And right now I don't have um, the uh, an SD card in here, mm -hmm. but what the packs will allow you to do is just load up entirely new projects with entire new three minutes worth of samples okay. and new synth presets and everything. So you can have like, my I'm playing live at the park on Sunday mm -hmm. um, setup on my studio setup and like just load different packs, which will completely change your tracks over and over and over again. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I was curious about that because I, again, we did get to spend some time with it, but I didn't go as deep as the, the pat. Like now I understand the hierarchy a little bit better and especially mm -hmm. just seeing somebody go through their own kind of workflow. Like I love my launch pad and it, cause it's just a, bonker sequencer and like a lot of the powerful things about the circuit tracks is i mean it actually kind of has more than the uh the launch pad to be honest because of the uh sounds <laughs> yeah yeah the, i mean just like i do really like to do the thing where i chain the the patterns together and so if i could just stay on a page that's awesome and it's battery power too come on so i can just have a battery power yeah. sequencer yeah. wherever i go <laughs> that's like that's a that's a big that's really a cool the coolest part about this device to me as a groove box, like somebody who loves groove boxes, is that you can just sit in your lap and just bring it around the house with you. And it doesn't turn yeah. off when you plug it or unplug it. It just like, if it becomes accidentally unplugged, it's still there. Like live performance, <laughs> like it's got you covered. I think that's yeah. super rad. It's so funny too, because with the original circuits, whenever we would do like a synth show, at one point in time, the power would always blow because there was like 30 power strips all chained to one outlet oh, running everybody's studio and like the power would always go out and i would just have my headphones on and i would be on circuit just like doing whatever you know and then i would kind of look up and be like why is it so dark in here like, what's going on and everyone's like there's no power and i'm like oh i'm still good like <laughs> i'm just jamming over here so same thing here it's like you have the rechargeable rechargeable battery now so you don't have to worry about swapping out batteries or buying rechargeable batteries it's all just built in it's way thinner than the original circuit as well. And yeah, kind of like you're saying, you just go ahead and unplug it and it, nothing nothing is lost, nothing hiccups, nothing changes. You're, you're still good to go. Nice. So One we... question I kind of had about uh, the synthesizer in it. Um, I, what is the synthesizer inside of it? Um, so the two synths here are two separate Nova synth engines. They're basically okay. from the Mini Nova line. Um, we've redone all the presets, but it's still the same synth engine as the original circuit. And we've also updated it so that instead of, I think it was 32 synth presets or 64, you have 128 now. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, so you have four banks of 32. So you can, you know. Yeah, that's great. Um, kind of goes on to another question we're seeing here in the chat about um, kind of the component software. Somebody said... Uh, how has the component software changed from the new version? And then another question, which is somewhat related, uh, just like DAW integration. Is there, is there any sort of DAW integration or is it still kind of its, its own thing? Right, so I'll tackle that one real quick. So mm -hmm. DAW integration, when you plug it in with the USB, it will register um, as like a class compliant MIDI device. Mm -hmm. And another great thing is on the circuit tracks itself, if this is a, another major plus for me, is if you hold down shift and hit save, it'll take you to the system settings. Mm -hmm. And here you can turn on or off, receive, send notes, transport, CCs, all that stuff. And you can also oh, cool. select what MIDI channels um, are corresponding to what track. So oh. right now MIDI one is on channel three, 
MIDI 4 is on channel 4, I can say, cool, synth 1 be on MIDI channel 5, synth 2, let's go on 9 or whatever this might be, or 13, I think. And um, then you just hit play and you go back to this. So all of this can be used to sequence a DAW. There is an audio over USB. It's mainly just MIDI information that you'll be sending and receiving from circuit tracks. And the other thing to note is that the two MIDI tracks, these eight knobs actually have eight different presets per track. And these eight different presets, you can customize what MIDI CC messages are being sent, and you can automate those across the sequencer when you're sequencing things. Oh, wow. Wow. Again, that's like blowing my mind, because like I said, like I, I do love my Launchpad Pro, but to have those knobs and some CCs there, yeah. I don't know, man. It's... Uh... It might be getting and all the stuff. automation <laughs> and then you start mutating all that stuff because the automation gets written to the steps it's it's really really yeah. fun to use and just explore and here let me go ahead and jump over into the component side of things mm -hmm. um let's see can you can you see that all right oh yeah oh yeah it's coming through crystal clear okay cool so i currently don't have circuit tracks plugged into my laptop believe it or not uh, so i don't have it connected but this still allows me to look at what is possible so this is the synth editor here We've basically just redone it, made it way more streamlined than the previous one. For example, you have three modulation envelopes, which is more than enough already, two LFOs with a ton, ton, ton of different LFO shapes. Like, look at all this. This is crazy. Alternate four, and then you also have the different phase points wow. within, those, within those LFOs. And then there are even weirder ones like minor seventh which will do like melodic things if you were to send this oh, over to cool. oscillator pitch to create arpeggiator sounds and you can <laughs> also set them to one shot and all this stuff and then you have all the macro controls and you have this little um purple dot basically you drag and drop this dot to whatever you want that macro knob to control so we can say cool control the rate wow. so now this is going to be moving our rate and not only that, you can do a ton of different things okay. at once. Hmm. You just kind of keep adding these. And, then you and can now save macro this knob to one, like a preset, which, right? Right, exactly. You just say save, and then uh, of course I would just log in, but save as what preset, and then you have all the different presets here. For example, this is the Circuit Tracks factory one. We can expand this and look at all the ones that are already here that you can kind of go, and you can even live um, preview these. Oh, well, this is going to load the whole pack, but this is kind of different patches. And these will be sent over to your circuit tracks in real time if you have it connected with USB. Wow. So you can actually hear it and be like, you know what? I do like that. Let me go ahead and send that to my circuit tracks and save it on this patch. So does this login thing, does that mean that other From users can put their packs on there and you can like use theirs or? Yeah, 100%. Whoa. So what's cool, let me see if I'll just log in really quick. That's really cool. And cool. So basically, like, say I like this patch, I can save as or download this patch as sysx. And then from there, I can say new patch, and I want to upload a patch. So I just hit that and drag and drop the sysx into that section. And then I can take that patch that, you know, my homie sent me and have it here onto my circuit tracks basically instantly. That or is you just, rad. you know, like I mentioned earlier, create a patch from scratch. Here you have control over your effects, whether you want a chorus or a phaser and then your equalizer, distortion types, what the voicing structure is like, auto glide, mono, poly, and then you also have modulation, which is my favorite, because you have a 20 slot mod <laughs> matrix with two sources <laughs> to each destination. Intense. And again, like all the crazy macro controls. So this is macro two, can control up to four things at once. Which four things, where does it start, where does it end, and in which direction? does it go what? so it's just like endless amounts of tinkering and fine-tuning fun weird ways of just kind of i don't know changing whatever you want and same with the midi templates here we can say create a midi template i already created a couple here we have like the typhon the micro freak volca oh, nice. so like if i were to select the volca this one it shows you exactly what it's going to do to your volca fm mm -hmm. and you say cool send to circuit tracks and boom that's now what that preset does on oh your uh, Volca That's so cool. or if you just create a new one select the macro what's the number from where to where 
Is it unipolar, wow. bipolar? What's the name of it? And you're good to go. It's like, it's super simple. It could be a good friend to the Octatrack. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, now, now, now I'm like lusting over this. Oh, that yeah. I, uh, already did. Uh, um, <laughs> got a few other questions here. Um, so, kind of back to the MIDI CC, like, how many lanes can you automate? Seems like there's essentially a sum of 16, 8 per the two MIDI tracks, right? Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's eight lanes of automation for the macro knobs just because you have the eight knobs mm -hmm. but again each of those well for the midi cc's it's only one cc per knob but for mm -hmm. the synth stuff they're macro knobs in that they can control up to four things at once nice and then uh the other question is just any plans for an ios editor which honestly that'd be pretty cool <laughs> Yeah, that is a that is definitely something we've been kicking around and talking about as well because it started off with components being all online and now we have components as a standalone mm -hmm. thing. So I think it's just trying to figure out a way to kind of port it over. But I'm not sure if it runs into some issues with like USB to MIDI or anything like that that's kind of already set in tracks. I'm not 100% sure, yeah. but hopefully it could be done in the future. Yeah, because I know that, like, I've seen that with, like, some of the Electron products where it's actually a third party that does, like, an iOS app right. to throw samples on. And, like, again, to me, that's, like, starts really getting things turning there because the less I use this thing, totally. the computer, are the, the happier I am. But, yeah, that's... Yeah, cool. exactly. I mean, I always think of this, this because, um, like, one thing I love doing is I'll record stuff onto my phone using the microphone mm -hmm. and then I'll save, I, I have it, um, my voice memo synced up with iCloud so I can then just drag and drop those sounds immediately like onto Octatrack or onto Circuit Tracks or onto any sampler. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's always like, well, how can I make this even faster? Like exactly kind of what you're saying. Like if I could just plug my phone straight into this thing and just like boop, 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 you know, just drag whatever I need right on there. Yeah. Outside, in the middle of nowhere, on right. battery power. On battery, yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's kind of the holy grail, is uh, battery-powered <laughs> things just go take it right outside the city and just start jamming, you know? Yeah, totally. That's cool, though. Nice. But yeah, I mean, other than that, there's a ton of other little things that Circuit Tracks is, is really good at and changes from the original version. Um, you know, I mentioned how the drums are separated, the pattern settings, the audio inputs that can be routed through the effects. You have de two dedicated MIDI tracks. And the other thing, Nick, you'll like this too, is similar to original circuit. If I were to just go to the mixer and turn the volume down of synth one and two, mm -hmm. I now have four six yeah. note polyphonic <laughs> sequencers that I can use for different hardware. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Which again, it's like right there with like the only thing that's not really missing, honestly, in my mind, because I still like to have, um, I like the pad layout. I don't really use the drum mode so much on the launch pad, but um, yeah, just the drum layout is is not going to be there, right? Right, exactly. And yeah, th just the, um, the, the new drum layout as well, which mm -hmm. is, again, one of my favorite things, because you could just quickly create yeah. really crazy patterns within one drum track, like mm -hmm. just trying to limit yourself. Yeah. To one drum track is also fun you know just like yeah cool let's put a kick here 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 let me find this this here and then let me find some hi-hats i'll put that there 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 and there yeah and find some. <laughs> it's so fun to program like Maybe this, this here and, it's, and there. it's surprising to me because i didn't really use the first circuit so much but a lot of these things are super intuitive yeah. and when you say oh this is a new circuit feature i'm like kind of mind blown because these are the things that made this thing seem so like <laughs> almost like oh i expected it to work like this but no this is new and this is it's a great workflow yeah that's that's definitely it i'm curious to see what the heck this sounds like <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you found it. You found the banger. <laughs> Some swing in there. Slow it down. Oh, yeah. I love that. There's a, there is some display with, um, with the pads. Right. 87 is our tempo. Swing will be at 65. <laughs> <laughs> that water droplet sound. Perfect. Now it sounds like some Donkey Kong.
Donkey Kong Country underwater. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a there's a ton of different like um, fun use cases for this thing, and yeah, it's such a it's basically we just took like all the best parts of all our sequencers. It's funny how it started with Circuit. And then that led to like the Monostation sequencer, the SL sequencer, the Launchpad Pro, Mark III sequencer. But they all kind of varied a little bit, kind of fine-tuned to what they do. And then we kind of just were like, okay, well, what's the best of all of that? And how do we bring that back into Circuit, the original, based, you know, tracks now, yeah. and push it a little further with different things? So yeah, it's such a hard comparison with like the Launchpad Pro Mark III, like you're saying, like yeah. that's awesome and it's fast and it's streamlined. But then you also got the knobs, and yeah. if you really want, you can use this as a drum machine too, because you got your samples right there. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. The hard thing for me is that I really do love the templates on the Launchpad Pro because I have this kind of double hand thing that I use with my rhythm. Oh and yeah. And it's just so sick that I'm just able to CC map, not CC, but note map that stuff so quick, right. and then use it in a very specialized way. So there's still reason why I'm not going to dump my Launchpad Pro Mark III if it's listening from home. We're still friends. Yeah. <laughs> but um... Yeah. And the one thing I always mention with the Launchpad Pro is, you know, where else in scale mode, where else can you hit eight octaves with one hand? Like, mm -hmm. bo -bay, bo -bay, you know, like right. immediately. Yeah. It's just like, that's pretty cool. Even on here, you still, you can only do four octaves, not yeah. eight. <laughs> yeah. There are some of those specialized, because actually, I don't know, this is again, like, I just, these, the new line of launch pad and launch control or launch key stuff has just been kind of blowing my mind, but I've been playing my Hydrosynth with the launch pad pro Mark three, and that has such great polyphonic aftertouch. Oh my yeah. gosh. It's incredible. And then again, that eight octave thing, cause that thing is just sonically super rich. So I'm using it, not like I'm using my other synthesizers, but I need that range to mm -hmm. really get it juiced, you know? Yeah, and I find oftentimes too, even with circuit tracks, that I'll do weird note combinations mm -hmm. that I wouldn't normally think of, like on a regular keyboard. Yeah, you know, because like sometimes, like let me see if I can even before we run out of time, if I can even. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Bum, bum, bum. Let's see. I'll just go to a blank project really quick. So this is. Let's say we just do something like this, and I'll turn the tempo down a little bit, to, like a hundred. Swing up a little bit. Cool. So say I have a chord. We'll go presets. I really like this one. I'll turn the oscillator mod off though so it doesn't do the one. <laughs> so let's say I put this note here. And I'll say gate. We'll go here. And then I'll duplicate that to the second bar. On the second bar.
took like how long? Ten seconds? Like, yeah. of course, I've used this thing for my entire life, yeah. but you you just you know once you start kind of building up the muscle memory and all this stuff, it gets you get past the point of thinking and you're just playing. Yeah, game, you know. And it's all stuff that we could aspire to. It's like, uh, like I said, like Matt's the expert at the Octatrack. I'm pretty fast at the modular. Like when we demo stuff here at the shop, people are like, yeah. how long did it take you to do that? It's like, it's not really a matter of how long. It's just like, <laughs> how long have I just been sticking with this? You know, it's right. not, yeah, exactly. it's not practice if you're having fun. It's like, how, how much, how, how into this are you? Exactly. You know? Cause, yeah. then Cause it, you just lose track of time. Yeah. And I kind of see it the same way as dancing too. It's just like, you start knowing when to exactly mute this thing, when to jump patterns and, uh, to have an interface that accommodates that. Cause yeah, like you said, like to be able to toggle or jump to the different scenes, like those are shortcuts that are like power user shortcuts. Mm -hmm. Like a Absolutely. beginner may not yeah. get to that, but in the heat of a moment and you're just jamming on this thing. Right. Come on. Right. Yeah. Important. yeah like yeah. Three what? the different save states and moving back and forth between them is definitely like an experienced user concept. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. It's, it's like you're, you're there and you're kind of thinking like, two bars ahead yeah yeah you know and like you're you're listening two bars ahead and this happens sometimes too like djing if you kind of lose where you're at it's so hard to catch up because music's always moving forward and you're kind of like <laughs> crap wait so it's now doing what and where's right. my brain and like what do i have to do next how long have i been on this loop you know yeah. so it's like <laughs> a nice little game of of catch up so i think it's nice to be able to just be like uh let me just mute the kit because i think that's been playing for 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> you get all this air back and you're just like wow I, i'm ready to bring it uh especially with this thing yeah. again you're able to <laughs> mute it start programming a new kick bringing it back in you know incredible because yeah mm -hmm. i mean as far as i know on the electron boxes love their electron boxes but i don't think you could kind of do that uh kind of pre right. kind no. of it's like a cute pattern cue but only visually you know i think we uh, we naturally think yeah. in that progression like as musicians as we're playing we want to be able to do what it's that function just all the time yeah and so i think like people right. that are new to it are just going to grasp it immediately mm -hmm. because i think it's like something that we expect yeah anyway that has not really been around right 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 so that's mm -hmm. that's really cool yeah especially coming from Especially coming from the original circuit, there was a lot of like, okay, if I was this setting, where would I be? And I was just like, boop, boop, like, okay, cool. Or <laughs> right. like, that looks like this. I'm expecting it to kind of work like this. I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's, it gets pretty intuitive after a while. It's intuitive. And again, it's like, yeah. you could be a power user and still dig in and find new stuff like this that essentially I'm learning a lot about. Or you could just be like, I recommend this thing. We have, you know, some customers who are just getting into this sort of thing and to have something that's all in one, but it isn't just like pre canned piano sounds or whatever. It has a sequencer, has some deep things, but if they're just doing loops, 16 bar loops all day, that's great. You know? Yeah. All day. Yeah, all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, <laughs> it's such a Swiss army knife. Cause it's like, I remember with the original circuit, I had it by itself. I was like, Oh, this is fun. And then I remember I put it on top of like my Oberheim expander to just run like you know two different synth channels in there and multi-timbral with the drum machine and i was just like this is hilarious that i can use it in such a simple aspect mm -hmm. but then i can also apply it to like pro gear or yeah uh, a right. crazier studio setup you know totally and it's even funnier is seeing um people wonder like why would you ever run a three thousand four thousand dollar synthesizer through like this two hundred dollar box, I'm like, why wouldn't you? Like, let's find all. This is where you find new sounds and right. explore different things and yeah. stuff that was, <laughs> you know, unachievable before may have been now achievable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all glue, right? So anything that like brings that thing next to the next mm -hmm. thing gets you recording and playing. Because groove boxes, I mean, like, yeah, I have a huge modular setup, but I still go to the groove boxes because it's still turning my brain in a different way. Right. And oftentimes, I'm just like you know, wishing I could just sample it all the time. So even when I'm playing with the circuit tracks or, you know, I have some rolling groove boxes too, like these things, even though everything's kind of macroed, I'm still able to get some crazy unique things that, you know, right. if you get in that kind of price brain where like, oh, I, $800 is going to sound better than $400, yeah. you're going to miss that entirely, you know? And with that components thing, like being able to design yeah. your synth sounds, like yeah. to such a... Uh, 
complex <laughs> degree like yeah and the macros i don't know that's it's really powerful and i'm surprised i was i was tinkering on it when we first got it here to demo and i was trying to learn it without looking at any manuals or go mm -hmm. on the internet about it which i ended up doing eventually a little bit but right. i was able to get pretty <laughs> far on it pretty mm -hmm. quickly yeah i did get lost a little bit with scenes uh, but you cleared that up like in two seconds and uh yeah i was surprised by like how how deep the machine could get for at the price point yeah yeah exactly and that's this yeah like you mentioned about the synth it's like it's two actual synth engines yeah. like it's not just synth samples or anything like that like these are full-blown synthesizer engines that you can fully program and we've put out different sound packs for them and i'm pretty sure we're going to line up a bunch of different sound packs for tracks maybe with artists and things like that and then just the ability to share share your patches as well like you saw there's like this big community built around circuit and like the circuit owners group on facebook oh, and yeah, things like huge, that where yeah. exactly all of that was happening it was like people helping each other out with tech stuff uh showing off cool setups or weird ideas or you know like that weird stereo input bouncing thing i'm going to try that out later and see what that does or maybe send the right out into the left in <laughs> and feed that back like it. into itself like do whatever you want you know yeah. it's just like this weird little endless battery powered box <laughs> totally so yeah it looks like we're at four o'clock uh in the chat there's an overwhelming question right now saying that it's three or three day and can the circuit do acid and can we get an acid outro i don't know if that's possible oh man i <laughs> know it's putting you on the spot Dude, you know if i if somebody told me that i'd, I'd start sweating like, like a pig um, right but, uh, <laughs> i need to find that <laughs> find the right patch. Oh, that's sounding good. That one's kind of good. So what would we do? Let's do a six-step pattern, and then we'll say... <laughs> My elbow hit it. <laughs> oh, dude, come on. <laughs> Hopefully that was somewhat good enough. <laughs> no, I think that, that more than satiated... My knee, <laughs> you know, but that was amazing. Thanks for uh, humoring us there. Um, yeah, of course. You know, I dropped the link in the um, in the chat, but you know, like I was saying, we're still technically on pre-orders for the uh, circuit tracks. Uh, we'll get them here at Patrick's Friday, so if you pre-order, we'll ship them out then. Else, we'll have them in stock. We already have this. Um, people who have been by the shop know that our demo unit's been chilling on the floor and has certainly been. Uh, Catching my eye, man, the thing. I It's funny, Matt, on the video, like, cut out five minutes of me just talking about how good the thing looks. I just couldn't <laughs> shut up about it. But, That's um, true, I did. Uh, but it does look really good. It does I look mean, good, but... Oh, nope. <laughs> yep, yeah, there, there it go. is. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at that. I mean, it's gorgeous. Uh, yeah. And it is so thin. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, it's that. It's And it has a little, like, uh, angled... 
yeah slope to yeah. it dude that's exactly what i spent five that's minutes like talking favorite. about yeah, <laughs> what we, five minutes of this hello yeah. Yeah, Highland Drain, yeah, you could buy it on store, <laughs> uh, possibly on Friday. We'll do an announcement uh, once we actually get them in the shop. I don't want anybody to come too early and be like, damn. Uh, we still have a decent amount there, so I don't expect them. Well, after this demo, they may be sold out. No. Yeah. But, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, and, and as always, always feel free to reach out to us at Patrick's here. Either call us, email us, uh, support at patchworks.com, or I'm just Nick at patchworks.com, Matt at patchworks.com. Enrique, you're the best. Thanks so much for yeah, hanging for out, back. showing this thing off. You know, like I think, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I thought I knew what was going on with this thing, but no, nah, nah, I need to spend another like four hours. <laughs> nah, 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 I nah, nah, nah. <laughs> 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 All right, y'all. So, uh, cool. well, I, as always, thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. totally. And uh, looking forward to the next time we could do something either in person or virtually. And uh, yeah. Peace and love, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye, Enrique.